Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we're going to be unboxing and taking a look at, for the very first time since it left the factory, this copy of Corel Draw 3, the best in graphics. Uh, what this is, if you've never heard of it, uh, Corel Draw is an illustration program and a bit of a vector graphics editor. And this version, version 3.0, includes illustration tools, charting, photo editing, presentations, tracing, and file management. It's the winner of over 90 first place awards. It's obviously Microsoft Windows compatible. And yeah, this version was designed for Windows 3.1. So this program actually got its start back in 1989 when the very first version for Windows 2.0 was released. Uh, and this version included some enhancements over previous versions. And these are kind of mentioned on the box here. Uh, this version comes with a, a bitmap editing tool called Photo Paint, uh, a presentation tool called Corel Show, which is where it says presentations right here, a charting tool called Corel Chart, as mentioned right here, and Corel Trace, which is a tool that allows you to vectorize bitmaps. And so Corel Draw would have competed with programs like Adobe Illustrator is kind of the uh, closest program that you would consider a competitor to this program. And this is back when software came in, uh, in, in pretty large boxes here. So this is about the size of my, uh, I, I would probably say my Microsoft Excel 4.0 box. I don't have it here with me, but uh, this was back when, I mean, this software would come with not only the, the software disks itself, but a lot of manuals and reading material for you to really get familiar with the software. And this specific package right here cost $129.98 when this sold new, because yes, this is brand new, and I actually mentioned this in my Packard Bell uh, restoration video, where, well, not a restoration of the hardware, but or the case, but of actually reinstalling Windows 95. It was my Windows 95 25th anniversary video. I mentioned that I would be doing a video on this, and it is brand new, although the shrink wrap is slightly broken, as you can see here. But yes, this is the original price tag, as far as I can tell. It cost $129.98. I purchased this for actually $5, because this was half off at the thrift store that I found it at. And it's kind of funny, because that's $5 is what I paid for the Packard Bell computer that we're going to be installing this on today. On the left side of the box here is where it gives you some information about four of the uh, of the main programs that come with this. Even though this is labeled and sold as Corel Draw, it does come with these three other programs and well even more as we're going to get into it. So it tells you about Corel Chart, Photo Paint, Show, and obviously Corel Draw up here. Uh, here is your uh, compatibility. This is not compatibility, you know, with what operating system and hardware that you have to have, but this is, uh, you know, file type uh, compatibility. So it will work with all of these different file types here. On the back here is where it tells you your system requirements. So this uh, did require, well, obviously it says it says right here an IBM compatible 386, 486 or PS2 computer. Uh, you need to have Windows 3.1. Uh, we're going to be installing this on Windows 95, actually. And you need to have a minimum 12 megabytes of free hard drive space, essentially, is just what it's saying there. And there is also a bonus CD-ROM. Let me go ahead and put this over here. This software comes on 3.5-inch floppy diskettes, as it says on the front. But it comes with this bonus CD-ROM, where if you had a CD-ROM drive, you could use it, obviously. And contained on this is over 250 true type and type 1 fonts, 14,000 clip art images, uh, curl photo paint samples, and over 150 animation flicks. So, uh, yeah, pretty cool. And it does give you more information about the four uh, core programs here and it's got its tagline up here the best in graphics Corel draw 3 for Windows does it all with unmatched power and ease of use there is no longer any need to buy separate illustration charting photo editing and presentation software Corel draw 3 now includes Corel draw chart photo paint and Corel show all in one value packed box so yeah pretty awesome so on the front here is where I was talking about it says right here three and a half inch format free CD-ROM inside and here's where it uh, mentions some of the things that are contained on the CD-ROM so, without any further ado, guys, we are going to open up this piece of software for the very first time since it left the factory back in 1992. That's when this software came out, and that's when this was manufactured. So, let's go ahead and uh, just continue tearing the shrink wrap on the side here and seeing what this is all about. So, we'll go ahead and tear this here. 
and we're just going to pull it down on the sides and take out Corel Draw. So here it is. And I'm obviously, well, I think I am going to keep the shrink wrap probably inside the box because it does have the original price sticker on here, which I do want to keep. So we'll set this aside. And here it is. So it's one of these uh, sleeve type boxes, or at least I think it is, yeah. So it's got this, uh, all of the information on the front is actually a sleeve that we can just pull out like that. And here is, oh wow, this is really cool. So this is just like the uh, the pieces of Microsoft Office software that would come in this kind of bookshelf. I mean, well, this was pretty common for all types of software back in the day. Uh, it would come in this like bookshelf style package where you've got, um, you know, some sort of illustration on the side here, although this one, what's nice about this one is because all of the product info is contained on this sleeve, they can really focus on putting like a nice graphic on uh, the sides here. Microsoft Excel has that on the front, but on the back is where it contains uh, all of the program information. So, uh, and all you have to do is just pull this out just like you would on like a bookcase. And so there's the inside of the, I mean, this is just a, you know, cardboard box here. So we'll set that aside. And right here is, uh, you can see that the majority of what is in here are these really, really thick manuals. This was very common. Uh, back in the early to mid 90s as well uh, because and this is you know obviously very very heavy and literally this right here is the software itself and you can see that it's actually kind of uh, this is oh yeah see that like adhesive how it's kind of uh, well it's not really sticking anymore but it's been shut for so long for like almost 30 years on the back is where it contains it's got read carefully before opening you should carefully read the following terms and conditions so this is like the license terms and all of that uh, we're going to set this aside for now because i do want to take a look at what else we got in here so right here uh, we have the installation reference guide for corel draw and uh, so yeah this is it's just crazy to think that this is the first time somebody's reading this book uh, since it was put in this box almost 30 years ago. So this just kind of tells you how to install it. It's got, you know, installation options. It's got this chart here uh, with different install options. Like if you've ever used it before, do you wish to install it uh, to run from your hard drive or to run from your CD-ROM? It's got like a, you know, chart there for you to follow along with. And it just, it just literally tells you how to install the program. So that's the installation reference guide. Does as you would expect. We'll set that right here. Uh, right here is not the thickest manual in here, but it's probably, yeah, it's like the second uh, thickest manual. And gosh, I just think that this like artwork on here is just super cool. So this is uh, the CD-ROM clip art symbols and flicks. And this contains all of, as it says, all of your clip art. So if we open this up, you can see that, yeah, this is uh, all of the different uh, clip art images that come with this software. Uh, that you can use, which is, yeah, pretty, pretty awesome. And not only, I mean, there's not only clip art in here, if we go back here a little bit, uh, you've got your symbols right here. So here's your electronic symbols, festive symbols. Now, all of this is obviously going to be contained on the CD-ROM so that you can use it with the, uh, you know, with the program. But there's also this vendor section back here where you can order, like, this is where you can order uh, more clip art. And you can call, like, for example, this company here, Images with Impact, uh, or I guess that's not the company name. It's 3G Graphics Incorporated. You could call them to get one of these catalogs with all of with all of their clip art in it. And yeah, so you've got different vendors. I mean, I guess these were like partners that, uh, or they paid Corel to have essentially like an advertisement in here for their, uh, you know, for their clip art that you could buy. Corel was and well still is a Canadian company. So there's their information back there. Not sure if this address is accurate. They were in Ontario at the time. They very well could still be. Uh, so that is the CD-ROM clip art uh, booklet here. Right here is the user's manual. <laughs> you can see that it is extremely thick. Uh, this specific user manual, let's go ahead and just check the page count here. Uh, this is what I usually like to do when I take a look at these really old pieces of software. See how just how many pages this was. So we've got like a glossary back here. There is no, oh, there's, or, or these are separate manuals. Oh, okay. So it's not going to give us like an overall page count because right here is Corel Mosaic. This is the beginning of the Corel Mosaic manual. Uh, so yeah, all of the different Corel programs uh, are contained in this one manual, which is pretty nice, although it makes the manual extremely thick. So right here, we just randomly opened up to the chart manual, 
and uh, these are all in color, which is pretty cool. So it's got nice uh, color images, and so yeah, there you go. Pretty awesome to see. So this is the very thick user's manual. We'll set that aside. We also have, let's take a look at what uh, this is right here. This is, this appears to be the uh, font reference guide. This almost looks like a poster. I guess you could have this like, yeah, this might actually be intended to uh, be hung up on your wall. Like if you were into desktop publishing, this could be very useful to have. Uh, yep, that's exactly what this is. It is a poster. And, uh, or maybe it's, I mean, you could maybe, oh my gosh, it's so like, <laughs> Yeah, you would probably, if you were going to use this, you'd probably want it to be hung up on a wall because this is extremely cumbersome. I mean, it is gigantic. Like, look, I'm just bringing it across the camera here. It it literally takes, like, my entire arm length, like, to hold it up um, because it's just extremely large. But, yeah, so it just has a bunch of different fonts on it. And, yeah, I would probably, if I were going to use this, I would hang it up on a wall. That's probably what it was intended to do, because this is definitely not the most, uh, um, you know, usable thing to just, like, open up and, oh, I want to look at what this font looks like. It's just, yeah. So, yeah, that is the, the font reference manual. We also have uh, this right here is your character reference chart. See, this is a something that you can actually hold in your hand and you know, flip around to view all these characters. So this is something that you could just have, you know, sitting on your desk. Uh, right here we have, I guess this is an advertisement for the True Match switching system. Uh, the digital difference. Welcome, oh, so this is included in this. Welcome to True Match four color selection mode in Corel Draw. True Match is the new standard for predictable four color results when output through PostScript. Uh, image setters for offset printing. So this is an advertisement. Uh, for true match so and you could get more information if you wanted to get this color finder here uh, you could purchase that the color finder on coated paper cost $85 you would get it for $20 off uh, using this I guess coupon right here so this is where you would put in your credit card information or mail a check to them uh, so yeah there you go uh, right here we have the Association of Corel Artists and Designers support information and membership. Do they have like a membership club, I guess? Yeah, so this is exactly what this is. This is a membership. Uh, it costs $48 per year for people in the US. Um, people in Canada and Mexico had to pay <laughs> in their own country. They had to pay more because it was $60 USD. That's not Canadian dollars. So it was more money in their own country <laughs> to uh, join um, their own program. Although, oh, maybe this isn't, oh no, this is a U.S. based, I mean, so this member, this, uh, Association of Corel Artists and Designers appears to have been based in Burbank, California, so that makes a little bit more sense, but they still charge more, kind of unfortunate if you lived in Canada or Mexico, or if you lived outside of North America, um, <laughs> you have to pay $72 USD. Um, because I was like, looking at that, I'm like, wait a second, why are they charging more money for people in their own country, because this is a, a Canadian software company, um, but this membership uh, association is not based in Canada. So, yeah, this is where I guess you could get support. Uh, it's a nonprofit organization created to assist all users of Corel Draw to better understand the product, it, its uses, and techniques. Um, so, yeah, there you go. So, you could sign up for that if you wanted to, obviously. Here you have uh, Corel Draw's process color chart. All possible color combinations in 20% steps. So this is where, yeah, this is how you could get specific colors by using different percentages of, um, you know, different colors. So if you use 0% yellow and 100% magenta and 0% cyan, this is what you would get. So it just kind of tells you exactly how to uh, get specific colors, which is pretty cool. Another good, like, reference thing to have on your desk. Uh, so, yeah, pretty nice. And yeah, there is a lot. I mean, we're going to obviously get to the software, but I do want to go through everything in this box. This is definitely going to be a bit of a longer video. Hopefully you guys will uh, enjoy that. Here is a quick reference booklet. This is, um, yeah, super, super useful to have on your desk, especially if you don't want to read through this, uh, this giant manual here every time you want to use the software or you want to get to a specific, you know, oh, like, how do I do this? I don't want to have to thumb through this entire uh, book here. I can just use the quick reference booklet, which this contains... Um, you know, some of your most used uh, functions. So it tells you what each of these tools uh, does 
and uh, they're obviously going to be different for each of the programs. So this is all for Corel Draw. Then you've got Chart over here. So this gives you some brief information about some of the more common actions in Corel Chart. Same with Photo Paint and Show over here. So yeah, pretty, pretty useful to have. Right here you have your registration card, I believe. Uh, let the Corel form open the world of... Oh, this is CompuServe. Yes, I want online support with Corel on CompuServe. Send my free introductory CompuServe membership. Ooh, you get a CompuServe membership uh, for free. I don't know how long it would be for, although it might say here. Um, free one-month membership to all of CompuServe's basic services. A $15 introductory usage credit to explore the Corel form and CompuServe services. So yeah, this address, I mean, obviously it's a PO box, but even if I were to send this in, it would not get to the PO box. Um, and that is because of this permit number right here. Uh, so this is a business reply mail piece of mail. So what it does is it allows me to send it without uh, having to pay for postage because it says postage will be paid by addressee, you know, the person who receives this. Uh, but since, I mean, this permit number is obviously expired by now. This is permit number 47 from, or 407 from Columbus, Ohio. So this would probably get sent back as undeliverable. And that's exactly what happens with these Microsoft registration cards. Here's one of them right here. This one came with Windows 95. The address on here still exists. This is supposed to be sent to PO Box 72789 in Roselle, Illinois. Uh, someone's probably renting that, that PO Box today. I mean, the post office has to still be there. And uh, this PO Box probably still exists. Uh, I mean, I don't see why why that it wouldn't. So this address exists, but because the permit number is expired, this gets sent back as undeliverable mail because I've seen people try to send these in before and it gets sent back. Uh, so there's no, probably no point in actually sending this in. Um, although maybe if I were to put this into an envelope and then put like manually write out this address and then, you know, affix postage, it would probably get to the P.O. box. But obviously, I mean, I wouldn't think that uh, CompuServe is like there anymore. Um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, right here we have the, this is uh, Corel Draw's registration card. So this is not the registration card for Corel Draw. This is right here. And this, you know, you have to affix your own postage, as you can see. As far as I know, you cannot uh, use one of these business reply mail. I mean, to send like international mail to say, oh, it's going to be paid by the, you know, recipient of the mail. Um, so you have to affix your own postage, which this would obviously cost a little bit more since you're sending international mail. But here's your registration card right here. So this is where you would fill out your name, title, company name, address, all that good stuff. And uh, it asks you what kind of computer that you use, if you're currently using Adobe Type Manager, and uh, what kit did you purchase. And now we're getting into the good stuff. So right here is the CD-ROM. On the back of the CD-ROM right here, you can see it contains all of the uh, Corel Draw programs, and it also contains those extras down here. So that's pretty nice. So they included a floppy disk, a three and a half inch floppy disk version, which is again right here, uh, and the CD-ROM version, which is super nice. Last but not least, well, we've got this. Oh, this is cool. This is a sticker. Your Corel Draw technical support hotline. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. Last but not least, <laughs> we have a VHS tape. Uh, it's easy, Corel Draw 3.0. This is like an introductory video. Um, I wonder if there's anything like that Windows 95 one. Oh gosh, that would be funny. I mean, the tape can obviously deteriorate over time, but it might be worth a try to see if it still works. Um, but yeah, I didn't even realize it came with a VHS tape, but it does. It didn't mention that on the box, at least from what I saw. Maybe it did, but I just didn't really see it. But yeah, so that is all that is contained in the Corel Draw 3.0 box. What we're going to do now is we are going to install this thing on the $5 Packard Bell. I think just for just for a little fun, we are going to use the 3.5 inch floppy disks. Uh, we can also take a look at what's on the CD-ROM later in the video. Yeah, this is going to be a bit of a long video, but like I said, hopefully you guys will enjoy that. Um, but I'm going to get the camera all set up, and I'll be back with you guys in a little bit. All right, everybody, here we are. We've got the $5 Packard Bell Legend 3540 booted up. We're here at the Windows 95 desktop, and uh, we're going to, for the very first time, open up these floppy diskettes. So we're just going to... I'm going to try to keep this, although I guess you're not really going to be able to... Yeah, we're just going to have to tear this through like this, I think, yeah. I've been pretty lucky with floppy disk purchases that I've made for the most part. Uh, they have been able, like that Microsoft Office 97 
uh, install video that I did, for example, yeah, I purchased the 47 disc version of Office 97 and every single one of those discs worked and those were not new, those were used. Uh, so these are brand new. This is the first time they are being uh, touched since you know they were put in that package almost 30 years ago. So we've got five discs right here and then we've got, this is disc six through disc 11. And yeah, we are going to install these using the floppy disks. We can use the CD if these don't work, but I just think it would be a little fun to, uh, yeah, make us go through a mini floppy disk installation here. So we're going to go ahead and pop in Corel Draw disk number one into this computer's floppy disk drive. And we're going to open up my computer here, and we're going to uh, see if we can launch the setup executable. So here we go. It's able to read the files off the diskette. And here's our setup file right here, so we're going to open this up. And here we go. So it says right here, this program will install CorelDRAW to your hard drive. If you want to install CorelDRAW to run from your CD-ROM, run setup2 on the CD-ROM disk. Okay, so yeah, there is a way that you can, instead of installing uh, all of the uh, files to your hard disk, you can have it need the CD-ROM to load the entire program so it would take up less space on your hard disk drive which could be very useful if you had a smaller hard disk uh, this floppy disk version doesn't allow us to do that so we're going to click on continue we're going to do a full install which will require 34 megabytes of free space so we're just going to do that and we'll install it to see corel draw that's fine so here it is asking for disk number two i'm going to pop that one in and we're going to press ok we're going to probably do a bit of a time lapse for this section of the video All right, well, it looks like we have a bit of a problem. It was not able to read a file off the A drive. We're just gonna press enter. Setup failed, oh wow, okay. So I guess that disk number, what is this? Disk number 10 here is not fully intact because it was not able to read something off of it. All right, everybody, we finally did it. And you can see by the clock, it's been quite a while. I haven't been working on this for the entire time uh, between these two clips, but I want to briefly tell you uh, some of the things that have transpired because, uh, yeah, you guys saw from the last clip that we weren't able to get it installed successfully. One of these floppy disks, it was trying to find a file on it that it couldn't find. Um, so I just made an assumption that that disk w was corrupted. It was able to still be read by the computer. Like I could put in the disk into the floppy disk drive. I could go into Windows Explorer and browse all the files on the disk, but there was that one file that I was trying to find that wasn't on there. So then I decided to move on to installing the CD-ROM version and I opened this up, which I'll throw that footage on here now. I opened that up, put it into the computer, uh, launched the setup process, and it froze at this screen right here. And this is the screen where, it, when it's trying to verify how much free space that the hard disk has to see if it'll be able to install. And I left it there for literally about an hour and it didn't get past it. I had to force reset the computer. We'll just like press the reset button on the front to, you know, restart the system. I tried to install it to, well, I did, first I tried to delete the partial installation that was installed through the floppy disks, because remember this did install up to disk number, I think it was 10. I tried to install, or like tell the CD version to install to a different directory, multiple different times and it did the exact same thing. Then I tried the floppy disk version again. I tried to do a full install once more. It did the same thing that it did the first time with uh, with trying to, or when it was trying to find that file on disk number 10. So then I resorted to doing the minimal install, which is what we've done here, and that actually worked. It appears that that minimal installation only installed Corel Draw. It didn't install Corel Chart, Photo Paint, or Show. Uh, we can go into the start menu here, go to programs, we can go to Corel Graphics, you can see here's Corel Draw right here, it's the only program in here. If we go into the folder, again this is uh, Corel 9 is the installation directory that we used. Uh, if we go into here, 
if we go to Corel Draw, you can see, like, if I go into Properties here, this takes up 3.55 megabytes. Now, there are folders for Chart and Show and Photo Paint. That's what this is right here. But they're all zero bytes. So it installed, I mean, it copied the folders. It didn't copy any of the files that go in those folders. So, and again, I just checked, I mean, on this screen right here where it said full installation, minimal, and custom, I just chose minimal because I figured that, well, the full version wasn't able, I mean, whatever it was trying to install wasn't able to install, so I just went with the minimal version and that worked, but it looks like that only installs Corel Draw, which if all you were wanting to do was use Corel Draw, I mean, that's all you need. This is it right here. This is Corel Draw, so I can make a text box here. I mean, we're not going to make like an entire thing. So we're going to say hello world and then we can maybe we want to align that to the top. Let's go to text. We can change the character and change the font here. Here's all your different fonts that you got. Uh, we'll go with um, paradise. Now let's go with let's go with Palm Springs. That looks cool. So we can change the size, the style. Let's say we want this to be bold. So we can do that and maybe want to draw a, a shape here. And yeah, we can move these around freely. Let's say I want to select uh, this shape right here, and then we want to maybe fill that with, uh, let's say, a green. Uh, we can click OK. There we go. Now that's filled. We can resize. I mean, there's there's a lot of things you can do with this program, and we're not really going to get into absolutely everything that you can do because this video is already pretty long as it is. Uh, I mean, I, I do want to show you guys some of the basic things you can do. So obviously you can make shapes. You can arrange them around however you want. Let's say we want to make like a magazine cover. I don't know. I mean, I'm just kind of just coming up with random ideas here. So let's say we just want to make a bunch of shapes. So let's maybe do this and then we'll select that. We'll change the color to, let's maybe do a red or how about we do, uh, let's change this here, maybe a bluish color. So we'll do that and then we can make like some abstract here, guys. Ooh. So we'll do that. And so you can make a two color pattern. Here's the back is gonna be black, front will be white. Um, let's actually make the, let's make the back a, a bit of a grayish color. How about that? And we'll do that. Okay, there we go. And we'll make this large. And that's going to apply a pattern to the shape. So maybe we could kind of stretch this to be the background. Obviously we wanna change this and make this go on top. I believe you can just go to arrange, yep, to front. So this can now be on the front. We can make this kind of go on the bottom here. Um, I would assume that it would get like, cause this is the, the page here, obviously that would get cut off. Like if you're gonna print this or whatever, we can drag this out to the size of the page. Maybe we wanna add hello world uh, on top. Oh, we have to, whoops. Oh yeah, and the undo uh, keyboard shortcut is not control Z by default, it's alt backspace. So I think we can have the title like up. Oh, I guess I just, what did I do that cut? Oh, okay, so if you hold down like, I can just drag this around by holding down the mouse button and dragging it around. If you drag it around and then you click and hold the right mouse button, it creates a duplicate. So that's interesting. So we can create duplicate ones of these if we want. What I want to do is make this the title. So we'll have this up here, stretch this out a little bit, and then we'll highlight the text and we'll make this a little bit larger. So we'll go to character. Let's make this like size 100. We'll make it bold. There we go. Okay, so now we need to uh, resize this a little bit. So we'll do that. There we go, that works. And then maybe we wanna change the color of this. So let's select that and we'll go to our fill tool here. And I believe, yes, yeah, so this is going to just change the color of the text. So maybe we wanna change the color of the text to be a light blue color. I think what we should do is add a shape in the background to kind of make it um, so that you can actually read the text because I don't think you can really add like a shadow or something like you could do in Photoshop. Uh, so we're going to, let's just draw another shape here. So we're gonna size this so it just goes off to the edge like that. That should be good. And then we'll arrange to back. Well, I don't want to do. I don't want to go that far back. Arrange forward one. There we go. That's exactly what we want. And then we'll change this shape color, maybe to a to a red. And then let's change this to white. There we go. Yeah. So there's our little magazine title. And then let's say we want to. I'm trying to get this exactly in the center there. I think that looks pretty good. 
and we'll drag like this here maybe we can try to make like a draft of my logo which will be pretty this will be pretty funny so we'll go to our text tool here we'll type out mjd which you obviously can't see we want to align that to center and then we want to obviously select it with the text tool we're going to make this uh well i do have the text white on my logo but i have a very dark green background so we'll apply that we'll go to our text character tool we'll make this like size uh, let's say 80 uh, it'll be definitely need to be larger than that okay so character uh 120 no even larger than that okay let's do 200 okay that is definitely what we need so we'll drag oh look at that it's what the oh, that's interesting okay so we had like some interesting effects going on there. that actually looks i mean i use the the, the font i use for the logo is not this exact font but this looks kind of close to it so we'll maybe drag that like right here drag this a little bit over i think we can just align this like if you do control a's to align we can align it to center align to grid and there it is in the center we'll do the same with this center align to grid boom there we go so now that is centered there we go guys i mean that's like a super basic creation here in corel draw i mean obviously this this program could do a lot i mean this was you know, used for, I mean, you could use this for desktop publishing. I mean, it's a, it's a graphics program I and mean, you could do a lot with this, but I think this looks pretty cool. If I had a printer hooked up, I would definitely print this out. That's the next thing that I need to find is a, I mean, there, there's a lot of things that I want to, well, I, I was trying to get like a printer and a graphics card and a set of speakers for the 98 PC, but it would be cool if I could find a set of speakers, a printer, and just like a whole setup with a bunch of accessories and then I can swap between the 95 PC and the 98 PC, have like a, maybe like a KVM switch setup going on. That would be really cool. Obviously, I don't have any of that right now, but I mean, it's definitely stuff that I'm on the lookout for. And if I ever find that kind of stuff, like at a garage sale or a thrift store, uh, I, I will definitely feature it on video. Um, but that was a demonstration of Corel Draw, guys. Hopefully, we're going to save this actually right now. Let's just... Uh, Control S. We're going to save this right to. Let's just do the root of the C drive and we'll save it as mjd.cdr. And there you go, guys. So that is my awesome Corel Draw magazine cover draft. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And as always, guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.